What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be at Consensus 2024. Equally excited to be with the man, the myth, the legend, Benjamin Diggles, co-founder of Constellation. Benjamin, we've seen a lot of kind of evolution of this space and the technology over the past couple of years. I think one of the things that sticks out to me when I look into what you guys have built within the Constellation ecosystem is the work that I know you personally have been doing with, uh, with Federal, the government, the DOD. Can you maybe walk us through that evolution a little bit? I mean, have you seen a shift in like education and knowledge from, from government entities looking to leverage this technology and how does Constellation play a role in that? Yeah, hey, really appreciate the intro. It's great to be here. Um, and yeah, I mean, so I, I went to my first crypto conference uh, about six years ago and to see where it's come from there to today, uh, a lot of stuff has changed, but a lot of stuff hasn't. And that's very interesting. And it, as I'm sure you've noticed, there's not really anything here that's pointing to a federal presence when it comes to Web3, um, which is OK. I understand that. I mean, it's a lot of people look at like this industry as us versus them, the regulators. And, you know, the, the, the government is sort of the boogeyman in this. Um, we were fortunate enough five years ago to really get deep involved in federal to th focus on how do we bring our our protocol and the best of breed type of scalable data solutions to some of the hard issues that the federal government is seeing. And it hasn't been an easy road, uh, but we did create a program called Iron Spider that is bigger than Constellation. And that's why I love being here is because I've already spent the morning going around saying, hey, uh, I can get you involved in federal if you're interested, because we believe that there's not one blockchain or Web3 solution to rule them all, but that there's an opportunity for these best of breed solutions to come in for the use cases that are specific against the largest customer in the world, which is the Department of Defense. Um, I'm very, very proud of our team. I'm proud of the decisions we made early on in this, what is somewhat of a nascent industry still, that we've secured our place at the table of being one of the most, if not the most awarded blockchain company in federal history, um, which is awesome, right? It's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, but at the same time, like to, to be able to go around to people like, yeah, we're actually doing stuff that's making a, a real world impact on these use cases is just awesome. Now, I know you guys have, you know, crypto and digital assets, blockchain, this is a space where a lot of people talk about doing a lot of things. You sure. guys are actually doing a lot of things, um, even demoing, you know, use cases to the to the government. And I, I would love maybe I, I know we can't get into the weeds with all this stuff, but maybe just an overview of like what is some of the feedback that you that you've been getting when you showcase how data um, on the hypergraph and on what you guys have built can really be leveraged from the provenance standpoint, from the tracking standpoint, to make sure for security purposes that the, the data is like real. Um, what's that feedback you've been getting from the, from these government entities, like the the top brass, I guess I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, it's, well, I mean, if we look back in history, you know, IBM was one of the first to get into federal. Uh, they have, you know, they partnered, of course, with the Linux Foundation, with their Hyperledger Fabric contribution. That became a huge uh, effort known as Trade Lens within supply chain management within the federal government but it fell short, right? I just had a uh, meeting with a, a tier one systems integrator and they're like, yeah, we worked on that and it just wasn't enough, right? And that was a lot to work against because the government's sitting there thinking, hey, if IBM can't do this, who the heck are these guys, right? So it took a lot of education and uh, proof points to say, let us just prove it. Like we can put our money where our mouth is. And uh, you know, those that have been following this, October of 2022, we were validated by the Air Force Research Laboratory as scalable, secure, and DOD approved. Um, and to just kind of give a little leak here, uh, we recently just had another big approval. Um, we punched through another big milestone as a company um, by doing these demonstrations, by showing them things around using different vernacular, which I know sounds weird, but we don't use words like wallet because they start thinking of cryptocurrency, we, you know, you know, the key, key signing or, you know, whatever we want to say that is not that. Um, but they're interested in things like secure information sharing and trustworthy AI. Um, IOT sensors, data sharing, that's autonomous, right? Um, but I'm so thrilled that we finally have gotten their heads wrapped around what it means to have a decentralized network working for them that they can wholly own, that we're not doing it as a software as a service pass through, that we see the data or we see all that sensitive information. They own it. We just support them from the sideline. And we're looking to go DOD wide with this. I mean, that's my vision in this is not only to create Iron Spider as this evergreen program, for Web3 solutions to flourish within government beyond just Constellation, but to truly become a standard on how these government agencies not only communicate data with each other, but with their poorest environment of contracting partners. A hundred percent. I think one of the other interesting initiatives that has kind of shaken out over the past six months has been uh, the um, National Digi Foundry, NDF. Yeah. 
uh, and the work that Kevin Jackson is doing through Forward Edge AI. And um, I think what's really, really interesting there too is it's kind of, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a sandbox environment for these government entities to kind of really test out DAO initiatives or decentralized autonomous organizations. Sure. You've got uh, entities like the U.S. Department of the Treasury. You've got NASA. You've got Space Force. You've got IBM. Um, how are they kind of leveraging? Like, it's it's crazy for me to think that, like, I know they don't like using the term wallet, but they're using a Stargazer wallet. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, so that's what makes this group, the NDF or National Digi Foundry, so special is, look, we're all gold panning, right? That's what everybody in this room is doing is they're, they're shuffling that pan, hoping to find gold because uh, we're still in a very antiquated industry. And so I've gone through a bunch of consortia. I've done a bunch of Dow stuff and a lot of them are just hot air. Um, the NDF was a big nugget of gold, right? And for them to have a focus on digital assets, that's their way of not having to use the word cryptocurrency, which is kind of the boogeyman, but digital assets and the cross section between these federal agencies and industry to come up with solutions that really do have true potential use cases in the real world. And we're seeing it happen so fast right now. Uh, it's really refreshing. I mean, to your point, all of these agencies that join the NDF, any company, whether it's federal or commercial, um, they have to use, and I don't wanna say have to, they get to use the Stargazer wallet as a way to interact with Web3 solutions like a custom NDT token that the NDF has created to transfer it amongst each other and to me, that type of exposure and hand-on practicality that we're seeing with companies like NASA, excuse me, and Space Force, I mean, it, it's a dream come true. hundred percent. I think what's been interesting too is like, we've had the opportunity to talk to, you know, people that are, you know, kind of in the weeds on, um, on Capitol Hill that are saying, you know, there are kind of these bureaucracies in place. There's these people sitting um, in these kind of positions of power that are kind of making the decisions. And really it comes down to, if you look at the United States, why you know what can we leverage blockchain technology for in a way that really moves the needle for us the economy yeah um, and you think about things like disaster and, and climate change you think about all of the work that the ndf is doing there's these like actual use cases that are being tested out um that can you know kind of really move the needle when i look at the constellation ecosystem over the past six months and even over the past year there's been a ton of initiatives that seem to be coming about that are all going to play into each other um, you've got National Digi Foundry and the DAO aspects. You've got the bridge aspects between Ethereum and Solana. You've got Metagraphs. You've got, um, there's, there's almost too many to name at sure, this point. Sure. The Enterprise Advisory Board. When you look at all these things tying together, some, like for me, it took a couple months, but a light bulb moment almost went off. And it's like, oh my God, this ecosystem is going to look totally crazy in about a year or so. Like, how do you envision these things tie together in, in a way that's really going to kind of move the needle from an impact standpoint? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, you know, those that follow me in the community know that last year I kept saying 2024, we pour concrete. This is the year concrete is poured, meaning we've been doing a lot of experimenting, trying to find that gold panning thing, right? Who, what are the hot spots? What's taking ground here? And it's not just something that we can affect, right? We can't just force adoption. There's a lot of things that have to come together like you know, folks on the Hill that are making these big decisions on regulations and compliance, the ETF stuff that just went through, all of this garner support, which really comes down to one major thing, which isn't profound by any means, is trust, right? Now trust is starting to happen. People are not scrutinizing Constellation because we've already earned our stripes. And with the launch of Metagraphs that took place in Q4 of last year, now the soup's on, man. Like people are coming to us, they're starting to build, they're starting to challenge us because they're building beyond where we've even seen with our network before, which is super refreshing and awesome. Um, I've said many times the future is microservices, micropayments, and microinvestments. By changing the pipes using blockchain and fractionalizing money using digital assets, the whole world has a chance to adopt new use cases that is going to leapfrog things that we don't even see as roadblocks today because we've gotten so used to the status quo. Um, so I believe like one of the things that is topical this year because we're in election year is there's no reason we shouldn't be doing voting on blockchain right now. KYC, yeah. Lat Long put on it, appended to a ledger. You know, you sign on it. We now have real time visibility into whose vote counts where. And I know that that's controversial and they probably don't want that because we kind of live in a shady world, but it's right around the corner. And so I think the future is really bright. And it's so nice to see these scrutinizers now that have gotten into the buy in and they're not trying to kill it anymore. I think what's interesting is when you think about trust, you mentioned trust. I've got to imagine it's a hugely kind of value, huge value proposition as far as metagraphs, where you can go to these entities, and you can say, hey, do you trust your current code base and current code logic? Right. You can just literally implement that within a metagraph. 
And then you can plug and play areas of blockchain in ways that make sense for you or your industry or your entity. Maybe talk a little bit about that. We talk about programmability all the time in this space, but I don't see a lot of it actually happening. Sure. That is like true programmability. It's like, hey, you have the security of your own code base, but then you then you can really manage compute and you can manage the things that you can do with your own code base by injecting in the blockchain technology. You know, so one of the primary use cases around secure information sharing that we're doing with the government um, is really simple. And this is where we've broken through is trying to simplify this stuff is, hey, you have your existing portals and websites and apps. All you have to do when you're sign or sending sensitive information that may be top secret uh, is you have to sign for it. It's collected um, by the, the, the key signature. They sign for it. Their identity access management credentials are appended to our blockchain. All of that is then sent over to the other operator that receives it from a secure information sharing perspective. Once they accept it, it runs a quality assurance on that data instantly to make sure it hasn't been tampered, spoofed, or messed with, or corrupted in any way. It's really beautiful. And all it is is a check mark. You know, that's at the end of the day. Like, we're not trying to rip and replace or have some crazy overhaul on workflows. But I always said I wanted to be like the Intel and side sticker. You know, you remember they had those stickers that said, hey, this has an Intel chip on it. So people saw it and they bought it. We want to be a data pipeline check mark that, hey, if it doesn't have that constellation check mark, you can't trust it. But if you do, we're good, right? And, and we offer the tools openly that if you want to play the movie backwards or look at the math or dig deep into the data to prove that it is what it says it is, even though you don't have to do that, we offer that level of visibility in real time, which is a cool thing. I think that's interesting too. We, you know, one of the AI has been around for decades, obviously. But when you think about AI and blockchain, what's going into these large language models? Like what data is going in? Right. And to verify the data on the front end and give it kind of that trusted authenticity stamp of approval becomes then really valuable as it goes into these like models as AI becomes more and more widely adopted. Um, Constellation Network's been doing D-PIN before the term D-PIN existed. I didn't I know. even know what D-PIN was until I was like, what is D-PIN? I know you've been walking through <laughs> and you see D-PIN everywhere. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting kind of being at the forefront of all of this stuff. And I'm sure it's got to be pretty crazy to see a new term kind of being phrased when you guys have been doing D-PIN through, you know, door technologies for, for years at this point in time. Uh, Benjamin, I would love if you could maybe just walk us through. There's been so many things. What are you most excited about within the Constellation ecosystem moving into the future here? Um, you know, I'm most excited about the stakeholder economy. That's why D-PIN means a lot to me and something we've always believed in. And so uh, people don't know that Web3 really is the, the internet of value. And I'm very passionate about people. Uh, I want the wealth to be shared. And I think we're starting to see that take place with Web3 technologies. And man, if people can leverage, I've, you know, I've often said like, you know, with say healthcare data as an example, I know it's not D-PIN, but you, you know, maybe you have a single mom that has three kids and she can barely pay her rent but what if she has an ability to just take her digital footprint in which she's already acting today to garner some cryptocurrency to help pay for her life versus just being this ping pong ball out in the ocean which i feel like we're often at the behest of these large tech companies and those tides are changing and i just am so proud to be part of a movement that's enabling that for mankind um while ideally making America a, a safer and more secure country with the way that we're doing our stuff with the DOD. So that's what excites me, man, is just, and, and the collaboration, meet, meeting cool people that are excited about this esoteric world we live in, it really warms my heart. So, and the last thing I'll say is on that AI stuff, um, really powerful stuff. I don't know, I saw recently that if you ask Google's AI how many rocks you should eat a day, it tells you, oh, you should eat at least one rock, you know? <laughs> like, that's how bad this AI stuff has gotten, is that the hallucinations of these large language models are to the point of being dangerous, right? Um, and it's kind of like trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube, like, it's out there, man. And, and so I believe that that check mark of like, you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, 60% of the internet is like bots and like half of those are malware. So we already live in a world where nobody can even trust the internet. Now, when we bring in finance and sensitive data that really is important to the person or AI algorithms that are telling you to do something that could be detrimental, trust is imperative. So we're in an exciting time, but uh, really a lot of things I think are going to converge over the next 18 months. I think this is the hot zone. Well, I am super excited to hopefully have the opportunity to you know talk to some of the federal entities like over sure. time. I mean, I know in closing here. Uh, I've mentioned to a couple of people, I think that we're trying to work on a United States Department of the Treasury space. And people are like, oh, my God, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, that was because of uh, the work, the constellation, the, the, the infrastructure and the technology that you guys are building. I mean, it's moving the needle.
So I really, really appreciate the time today, Benjamin. It's been an honor um, having this opportunity, and I'm uh, looking sir. forward to future ones. Yeah, appreciate it.